So this unit of our class is related to carbon and climate policies. There are five learning outcomes, things that I hope you're able to know or do by the end of the unit. The first one is that I hope you understand the principle of common but differentiated responsibility. That's the justification for policies that allow for flexibility and differences in the way they are implemented around the world. So in the case of climate change, some countries have contributed more to the problem. We have emitted more carbon into the atmosphere over the last 150 years than others. And some countries have more technology and stronger governance institutions to create policy to respond to the threat of climate change. So the principle or the doctrine of common but differentiated responsibility allows the United Nations or other, other bodies of governance to create policies that allow for difference in implementation and solutions. Uh, not all actors are treated equally. Um, and, and this doctrine says that's, that's okay and that's a, a more effective way to mitigate problems such as climate change. The second learning outcome that I really want you to know is to understand the meaning of the social cost of carbon. The social cost of carbon is the term that we fit to describe the, the, the humanitarian implications of climate change. The social cost of carbon is actually a dollar figure. It refers to the amount of damage or loss in dollar value from one ton of carbon emitted into the atmosphere. So it allows us to place the damage of climate change into economic terms. We can place the impact of human migration from one country to another as a result of climate change in economic terms. We can place the damage from hurricanes or severe storms, tropical storms, um, and more severe droughts, things like that, changing weather patterns into economic terms. Uh, so the social cost of carbon um, is an important number, the number changes over time, but it relates to the damage and loss caused by one ton of carbon emitted into the atmosphere. So the third learning outcome for this unit is that I hope you are able to describe some of the scientific evidence that underlies the need for climate change. We will look at the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's uh, summary report for policymakers that takes the key pieces of atmospheric science and translates them into terms that policymakers will understand. We'll also look at the United States fourth national climate assessment. It does the same thing, but at the national level. The IPCC report uses international data. The fourth national climate assessment uses national data, but both of them take atmospheric science and translate it into human terms and dollar terms um, to provide the social cost of carbon. Uh, as a result, that's what compels policymakers to act. Policymakers respond to challenges that have social costs. And so may, being able to make that transition from science to economic terms to social terms is important to persuade policymakers that climate change is um, uh, an important enough issue to address. The fourth learning outcome that I have for you for this unit is that I hope you are able to describe, oh, I just clicked something on my stove there, I hope you are able to describe some of the key points, the ins and outs of several different policy proposals that have been offered in order to deal with climate change. So we will talk about a bunch of different policies in this unit. We will start with the Paris Agreement, which is a United Nations policy to deal with climate change at the international level. And then we will talk about several different policy proposals at the federal level. We will talk about the Clean Power Plan. That's Barack Obama's policy uh, to deal with climate change. It was never enacted. We will talk about Donald Trump's Affordable Clean Energy Plan. That also was never enacted. Uh, we're in the middle of a presidential campaign, so we will look at candidate Joe Biden's plan, which is called a plan for clean energy revolution and environmental justice. We'll look at the details of that. We will look at the details of the Green New Deal, which is a progressive group of policies being proposed by several Congress people, notably Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, it's, a, it's a complicated... Um, network of policies to address climate change through renewable energy development, employment, um, new building standards and building codes and construction codes. 
um, transportation and infrastructure. So it's actually a, a whole bunch of different policies that make up the Green New Deal. And we will look at carbon fee and dividend, which is a policy being proposed by the Citizens Climate Lobby, a grassroots citizens group, um, proposing a policy that's gotten some traction in Congress, uh, mostly because it is it, it has lots of bipartisan support. Um, progressives and conservatives alike seem to seem to like this policy for different reasons. We'll dig into some of those details, but we'll dig into the details of all five of those policies as well. So you'll know the ins and outs of them intricately. And then finally, I hope that you, by the end of this unit, are able to describe uh, your preferred policy approach for dealing with carbon and climate change. So that would be a policy approach that fits your political ideology, um, that fits the analytical lenses that you like to approach problems through and, and, and see the world through. So um, it might fit your progressive or your conservative or your libertarian or communitarian ideological lens. It might fit your lens of environmental justice or sustainability. But I hope that as we look at these different policies, you're able to find one that has elements in it that speak to you and that you think will help that policy be effective um, and that it's a policy that you might be able to, to get behind. So those are the learning outcomes for this unit. Um, and we'll do some readings and some activities that relate to each of them. And uh, by the end, you will be an expert in carbon and climate policy.